dear students the structural traits of the amino acids they determine the overall structural property of the protein in this module we're going to see how the overall structure of the protein looks like after the structural traits of each amino acid has been considered for that i need to review these points with you that the size and structure of each amino acid was different and their chemical and hydrophobic tendencies were different as well the structural property of each amino acid depends upon the side chain of the amino acid coupled with their chemical properties and their structural properties the amino acids uniquely contribute towards the folding process you would remember that the hydrophobic core of the entire protein was constituted by hydrophobic amino acids and the surface of the uh, protein was to be occupied by active or chemically interesting uh, amino acids now if the core of the protein is comprised of hydrophobic amino acids is the entire surface of the protein chemically active so this will give rise to a lot of activity on the surface of the protein so that is not the case some parts of the surface are also hydrophobic in nature so this is how selective positions on the surface of the protein are active while all others are inactive so once you establish a stable protein core then functional groups can be added to the active sites on the surface of the protein the functional groups are attached depending upon the functional nature of the protein in question so if a protein has a specific function then only those groups functional groups will be added that are able to perform those functions and moreover the surface of the protein may contain some flexible and loop like structures which are obviously able to have a chemical interaction with other proteins but do not have a specific function so this gives rise to evolution as well and the proteins can evolve to adapt to the upcoming challenges and enhancements in their functions as i just mentioned that the addition of the functional group these functional groups stay uh, specific positions on the surface of the protein not the entire surface is functional so that part of the surface which is not functional is still constituted by hydrophobic residues important to note that the active regions in the protein almost all present on the surface here in this example i will show you this organization so these are all hydrophobic residues and some part of the surface is functional while for the other part of the surface it stays as non functional and is also hydrophobic in nature as shown here in the blue so if some part of the surface is functional then specific functional groups take the position here and here so in this way a protein selectively designs itself to perform specific functions to conclude each component of the protein structure that is the core the surface is taken up very specifically by hydrophobic or hydrophilic side groups and that this position taken up by these groups is determined by the function that this protein is supposed to perform moreover the hydrophobic core is not totally useless as we thought earlier actually it controls the activity of the surface as well by exposing hydrophobic residues to selected portions of the surface of the protein